Okay. Um, if you saw my last video, you know I'm solving the deriv the derivative of function x equals cosecant x. So I already have this prerequisite information here. If you don't know, see my last video. To access my last video, access the playlist in the description box. So standard function, standard quotient, plugged it in, and now we are on the uh, important step of where we actually do some uh, analytics. So just like with um, the derivative of secant x, uh, we're basically going to take this, and you will see a scary resemblance. So cosecant x, it, well, cosecant theta is the same thing as 1 over sine theta. So we can apply that uh, conversion here. There we go. And we can take this h into the numerator. If you don't remember how, look at my other video. I explain how uh, I do that. So now h is there, h is there. Excellent. Moving right along. So let's start a new line. So now we have to get um, this sine x. In, we need to get a common denominator. So this fraction here that my mouse is circling, it's missing sine x. So let's stick sine of x in. Sine x sine x. And this other fraction, it's missing sine x plus h. And this is missing sine x plus h. Oh, let me get this sine x. I want it to be here. Alright. So, let us continue. Now that we have common denominator, we can combine these fractions pretty much. So we're going to get this uh, minus sine x plus h. next order of business is to go ahead and convert um, convert uh, the sine x plus h into its alternate form. Look in the trigonometric uh, appendix in the back of the book, uh, like page 800, um, A29, to see what I'm talking about near the end of the book. So it's going to be uh, the conversion factor for this is, and let's put in parentheses because I know that might bite me in the ass later going to be sine uh, cosine plus sine cosine yes and then uh, I input the factors in an inverse relation if I'm remembering the identity correctly I correctly x h h <gasps> x all right I believe I've done that correctly and um, let me take the liberty of distributing that negative. So let's copy paste this again. Uh, take this out. Negative. Excellent. Now let's uh, get to our next order of business. Uh, I made a mistake before and uh, I'm hoping no one else made this mistake. Um, I basically you have to remember that you have to separate this into two fractions. Uh, I know we just combined them, but you need to separate them again um, in order to um, get the correct factorization. Because remember, you can only factor when you're doing nothing but multiplying in the numerator. Uh, besides a anything that's going on um, in parentheses. So keep that in mind. So now, from here, we can factor out the sine x. So let's uh, make that a new statement or expression, whatever you want to call it. And uh, let's put this in uh, brackets. So it's going to be 1. So I just factored out the sine x there. Excellent. And now we can uh, cancel sine of x with the sine of x in the denominator. If you're canceling it out on this side, you know you're doing something wrong. Alright, so from here now, 
let's see we can now uh, and, and also keep in mind that all of this um, is part of the limit just an FYI so now let's go to our next order of business which is separating or, or, or uh, distributing this limit uh, well actually let's separate uh, what's internal internal on the parentheses in the first place so we have uh, things that should be familiar with for us so um, sign of X just got cancelled out so again we can uh, uh, more separate things into different fractions so we're going to have hmm, why do I have this bracket still there oh yes left the one minus cosine so we're just gonna have one over here and over here I'm gonna take this H put it over there and that should be familiar to you you should recognize that and you should know what the limit of that is and uh, let's see and he did this he did this proof right after uh, he proved sine of theta over theta uh, as H goes to zero or theta goes to zero really and now let's separate this into f two fractions and, and you should see the scary resemblance how, how you solve these in the same exact fashion so sign H over here and I believe I have an H on the end there that I steal alright excellent let's go to our next line so now we have all these statements We can now uh, factor out this limit across the quotients and the uh, addition subtraction that's going on. So from here, now we find what is the limit of this first thing, 1 minus cosine of theta over theta. We know that is 0. Okay, now we can plug in the limit here which would be that basically 1 over sine x right uh, the limit as h approaches 0 with sine of h over h that is 1 which we proved through the squeeze theorem the very visual problem no one can uh, I don't know I cannot fathom how uh, someone can forget all that ridiculous uh, charting that we had to do uh, all the work we had to do to get that proof so now um, Okay, 0 times 1 sine x, there we go, that's gone, and now uh, this negative one we have to keep it for a little while. We can, we know that sine, uh, this x plus 0 separates, we have to separate this into two fractions um, in order to avoid having a denominator. Let's go ahead and multiply this, uh, sine x is going to come over here, 1 over sine x. And now we are finally, um, finally up to our derivative. Cosine x over sine x we know is cotangent of x. And 1 over sine x we should know that that is the cosecant of x. And we could get rid of this uh, multiplication and just put in uh, the negative 1. Just negative cotangent x times cosecant x. And that is our derivative so let me double check that yes uh, the book may have um, instead of negative cotangent x it, it might have this flipped around where you have uh, cotangent x over here but but I swear to you it is the same thing it's the same answer so uh, and you should know that being in this class yes I'm under 10 minutes see you whenever